and welcome to Lorena's Labyrinth. I'm Anna Pirelli. Today in this video, we're going to look at the power and wisdom and the healing support that Archangel Jophiel can give to us. Um, and that includes looking at his purpose, his functions, um, and how he oversees teams of angels because he is a great Archangel so that uh, we can draw more specific energies into our lives. And right from the get-go, I'd like to remind you that when you're working with angels and invoking upon them, um, call upon the Creator first. You know, the Creator is actually the primary focus of angels and they want to support and reawaken our connection to the Creator. And so when I talk about Creator, the reason I use that term is because everybody's got a different name. Well, different faiths and religions have got different names as to what they refer to the Creator. It could be you might call him or her a source, God, Goddess, Jesus, Allah, Elohim, all that I am, the great I am, whatever it is that you use to apply to the Creator, that's what you run with when you're doing invocations. And you call upon the Creator first, followed by the angels that you're attempting to draw their healing energy into your life. So that's just um, something to mention from the get-go. So now let's have a look at Archangel Jophiel specifically. So as you can see on this slide, Jophiel is positioned as one of the great archangels. He's a creative power and he leads a team of angels as part of supporting us um, with our manifestations as well. So angels have a variety of purposes from divine messages of inspiration to protection, healing and so forth. Um, once again, their energy is non-judgmental, they're unconditionally loving and they are eager to help and support us to achieve our goals and to strengthen our connection to creator they can't make decisions for us or tell us our divine plan instead they support us to navigate life's challenges as we find our divine path and purpose and that involves reawakening the divine spark that lies within each of us so angels do not have an ego their desire is purely to act upon divine will and they work as part of a team of that higher order of light beings to assist us to raise our own vibration so that we can experience greater peace, joy and harmony in our lives. And the way that this occurs is through the development of our creative aspects and that unique and individual personal expression that lies within all of us. Our feelings and emotions are the keys to this development. Um, and they help us to raise the vibration so that we can work toward positive outcomes and solutions for all. So before we talk specifically about Archangel Jophiel, his powers and his wisdom, let's first of all remind ourselves that angels are part of an angelic kingdom. There is a structure, there is an order, and as you saw before, there is a hierarchy. They are bound by spiritual law and they will also incur karma if they act inappropriately. So everyone's got a guardian angel and um, every angel in the kingdom has a specific purpose or energy that they work with. So you can learn more about the angelic kingdom, obviously, by watching the video that I've loaded on the hierarchy. Um, and the other valid point here is that they can only intervene or act when requested. This is part of the spiritual law that applies to them. And when the requests are in alignment with the divine idea, um, and that when we talk about the divine idea, they will not create harm for anybody else, um, then they will certainly respond pretty well immediately, if not immediately. I think I'm... Um, being a little unfair to them here actually they respond immediately okay so the other thing about angels is that they always manifest in ways that we are comfortable with and um, what i do understand is they do have a winged aura in the same way that uh, we in human earthly form we have an oval aura that is egg shaped their aura is similar to ours but it's a bit thinner and it does have um not wings like a bird feather wings but there is some little side bits to it that makes them a bit different to ours from an energy auric perspective and i just wanted to clarify this because of course i've put up pictures of angels with these feathery wings like a bird and of course that's not what they look like um, they don't have a body anyway they don't have a physical body they have a light body and um, as i say because the aura is winged i actually it's my belief that the artists way back in the day who first started these feathery drawings 
um, actually probably had some visionary, if not clairvoyant, uh, capacities themselves. But either way, I've chosen to ask angels to manifest for me with the wings that are feathered because it just makes it easier for me from a clairvoyance perspective when I'm seeing um, multiple light bodies, if you like, it's easier for me to identify one from the other. But each to their own, you have to do what's comfortable for yourself. Archangel Jophiel is considered to be an angel of creative power, enlightenment, understanding, manifestation, um, knowledge and teaching. Now, just to be clear here, there is debate between some people as to whether or not he oversees the um, solar plexus chakra, the yellow chakra, or uh, the crown chakra. Now, from my perspective, I believe that he's associated with the um, solar plexus, the yellow chakra. However, you may believe differently and that's fine you could just turn around and say you know the angel of the yellow chakra or the angel of manifestation empowerment and this kind of thing if that's what works for you because for all of us it's about finding our own personal truth you might want to meditate on what this means for you what i can say is that archangel jophiel as with all the angels has a twin flame and his twin flame is called christine the reason I associate him uh, with the yellow chakra is because of his manifestation and the um, empowerment aspects and qualities that come with him because these are all centered in my understanding with the yellow chakra. However, once again, I encourage you to meditate and reflect on what feels right for you, what feels to be the truth for you um, so that you can make your own decisions. As an angel of empowerment, Archangel Jophiel helps to build hope, faith and trust. Um, and with this, of course, becomes the elements of prosperity and abundance if we're talking about physical manifestations. However, when it comes to the powers, his real powers include not only manifestation, but also teaching wisdom and illumination. Now, when we speak of illumination, this is about um, gaining understanding and insight about aspects such as the angelic realm and the light beings that help us here on earth and he assists to shift the focus of our thoughts and attention away from the personality and the ego um, and those things such as the material pursuits that occur with the ego um, onto the divine idea and this helps to bring the enlightenment the understanding the health and wealth that will actually follow as we learn and grow we're able to overcome our fears just so that you're aware of this you know we start to know what are our barriers to us achieving our potential and he helps us to work through that he's particularly involved also uh, with students teachers and educational facilities and people who are studying they can benefit from his assistance by asking for things such as better memory retention or better capacity for processing of new information and for ease of learning public speakers can also benefit from his gifts by asking for healing energy to improve the way that they deliver their services now as an angel of creative power jophiel also teaches us to discover the light that lies within all of us you know that divine ideas these are manifestations from the heart of the eternal of the creator and they are sent out in these electronic waves if you like um, to each of us to pick up upon and once we grab these ideas and attempt to start manifesting he coordinates and oversees a team of angels that bring this idea through to the vision and through to the completion of the um, manifestation request he does it by sending out um, messages to other angels who receive the vision who then project it this all happens instantaneously by the way onto um, other angels that condense the vision and add beauty add vibration add magnetic energy and all the rest of it to this divine idea and it builds in this amazing creative vortex of energy that is centered around love and this vision spins right so there's a bit of a scientific background to this it spins um and then another angel will come in and give that vision emotional depth and um the plan then moves further and further into its right place onto our side okay the earth side um it's also then infused with this faith by the shekinah um, which is another angel 
and it gets the hope and the divinity of the vision is applied to it and then Joe Fiel helps us to receive this vision in the perfect form so that we can manifest it. It's a whole series of events and it includes another angel of communication who helps with the clarity of communicating this vision into its uh, solid earthly form. So while his primary mission is to illuminate humanity and bring a conscious understanding of each other's well of our individual divine paths, he also helps us to access our own divine blueprint and he helps to release currents of light to develop this conscious awareness um, with this aim to shift us away from the personality ego and ego as I said before to ensure that we remain focused or to refocus on um, our divinity in the path. As a creative power, he really does teach us that fears can be a barrier to the development and our manifestations. So if we're talking about wisdom, the primary wisdom or lesson that he gives us is that feelings are vital. They are the main ingredient of any manifestation process. And this is for the positive or, or the negative. They are what connects us with our creative abilities and they are what draws thought into the physical substance. So when we desire things that help us to awaken, you know, such as that strong desire to be free or to be able to give and receive love or to be in the right job at the right place in the right time, surrounded by beauty, all of this kind of thing, um, to be open to gratitude, feelings of vitality and aliveness or peace. These are all really good things. And a happy and harmonious family, a loving family environment, enhance the experience of love. And anyway, the point being that manifestation should be fueled not only with the intention of what it is that we're trying to create, but we intensify that desire with feelings, not to be mistaken with thoughts of I want, but with the feeling. So this is why mindfulness is important because it teaches us to be able to differentiate which is basically our speaking mind about feelings and what is a physical emotional based feeling a sensation a yearn a desire a drive and often what we think is a feeling is actually just a want and they become what's called material attachments and when these are not part of the divine plan they become like chains um, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't desire abundance or prosperity because of course you know we all deserve to be rewarded but we have to be able to differentiate do we need something or are we just being greedy you know um, and it's okay there's not a problem with having money money is not a problem it is the um, desire for money above all things that becomes problematic so his wisdom is to encourage us to concentrate on manifesting things that are beneficial. They're worthy of our time and our commitment. You know, if you want to have a car, you can manifest one. What's your intention behind it, though? Um, and I think that I've used a poor example there as to using a car. When we talk about manifesting, if we're really following through the divine idea, it's going to be something that makes us feel good on the inside. It's going to make us feel great. It's something that we're passionate about and we want to do because generally speaking, it's going to benefit not just us, it's going to benefit other people because it um, mixes in this joy and pleasure of giving as well. So just to summarize here, feelings, right? The feeling, the sensation, the burning drive, the passion, these are all vital components or, or in fact the underpinning component of being able to manifest so to try and keep this uh, video brief i'm just going to talk about this slide and yet let you look at it in your own time um, his healing powers are associated with the yellow solar plexus chakra as i mentioned and what we've got here is the traits and attributes of a healthy solar plexus you know which is this strong sense of self-confidence and self-worth this is not to be mistaken for arrogance this is the fact that there is a clarity of mind the person's got control over their emotions they're confident they understand and know themselves and they have a sense of self-value as well so this is all part of empowerment and this is what um these are the areas of healing. If you were to look at this and find that you're lacking in some of these traits, then you would invoke Archangel Jophiel to direct healing to the yellow chakra. 
Now, hopefully this is a useful slide to you as well. Where the other slide focused on a healthy chakra, yellow chakra, this one um, gives you a lot of detail about what's happening when the chakra is imbalanced or blocked, you know. There's going to be physical symptoms as well as behavioural. Uh, when we talk about behaviour, we talk about the, the actions that we do or take or don't take. And there's also emotional symptoms when the chakra is out of balance as well. So you get some insight here if you want to have a read of this. You can just press pause. So with all the slides that I do in regard to connecting to angels, specifically for healing purposes, I like to give people a bit of a prompt on healing ideas that they can reflect upon for themselves. So what you would do in this instance is identify a behaviour about yourself that you find to be undesirable and unwanted and you would like to change. Then you reflect on how this behaviour has impacted on your life and notice whether or not it's something that you're willing to continue because the consequences of these behaviors might be painful you know so it's about um reflecting in a safe place when you're reflecting if you're finding that the pain is too deep you might want to have somebody close to you that can help you work through the pain but at the same time um you can always call on the support of the angels to embrace you through this process call on the creator first of course um, to help you to uh, release the suppressed emotions so that they can transform this pain into divine love power and courage and once you've got through that this becomes a newfound liberation and you can celebrate it in um, one of the upcoming slides, we're going to talk about how you can actually call upon Archangel jo Jophiel and invoke him and his powers. So on this slide, there's a couple of suggestions that are more generic that you can call upon him for at specific times. Um, feel free to look at this slide as well at your own discretion. But basically, it would be anything to do with the yellow chakra. But things I think that people uh, might be interested in knowing is that if they've really suffered um, some losses and been betrayed and lost trust and faith in people and in life in general as well, you can call upon Archangel Jophiel to direct healing to these attributes or um, issues, if you like, as well. Now, Archangel Jophiel is the holder of what is called the Second Ray. And as with all the Archangels, he's got a healing chamber or temple that's in the ethers. Um, there are people that believe that Sunday is the highest energy day to visit. Um, for myself, I think any day of the week is fine. If you think Sunday is the one that, that is the one to use, then that's the day to do it. But you can visit them any day of the week. Um, and actually, if you're lucky and you develop your skills enough, you can actually get conscious recall of visiting these temples too. Um, I think, to be honest, that when I'm on board and on track and doing things as I believe and love, I will actually tend to do it on a Sunday as well. But when you go to the healing chambers, you could just invoke for the generalist wisdom, illumination and understanding um, and to raise your vibration to the light levels, the maximum light levels you can carry. So if you're into crystals, which of course I am, um, and I used to sell crystals, there each crystal has healing properties. So if you were wanting to strengthen your connection with Archangel Jophiel, if you felt the need to, you don't need to have crystals, but if you're into crystals, certain uh, crystals carry different properties, okay? So let's say you were working with Archangel Jophiel to um, manifest abundance. You would hold a crystal citrine, if that was what you were into, because that's associated with prosperity and abundance. Actually, so is Tiger Eye, which is not on this particular slide right now. People who are energy workers, I would really encourage them to get a golden heel of quartz. Um, I just want to make mention though, if you're going to purchase crystals online, I think be very, very cautious because what I'm aware of is that there's a lot of uh, fraudulent material coming out of the Asian countries and I think probably even parts of Africa at the moment as well, where um, they're not actually the real crystals. So a lot of the time it's um, coloured glass, I think, must be coming out. But anyway, um, moving on with this, pyrite is really good for building strength and courage and helping to overcome, overcome uh, betrayal. Uh, amber is really good for connecting to ancient wisdom. If you were going to 
um, because we're talking about knowledge here, ammonite would be something that we, you would use if you were looking to tap into the wisdom of the ancients. Um, Mexican fire agate would probably be about enlightenment, I would say. It's a very beautiful crystal, obviously, and so is labradorite with the yellow flash. Now, this is not a good picture of Mexican fire agate because it doesn't show the yellow flash, but that's what you would be looking for. Um, the fire agate is actually quite expensive too. Now, there are other crystals that you can use as well. You can use honey calcite as well if that's what you're into. Um, rule of thumb is if it's yellow, then it's going to work with the yellow chakra reasonably well. Now, when you're connecting or invoking to connect with any of the angels, um, I personally always, when I'm stating my purpose and intention, request that if I fall asleep, that I wake with a conscious recollection of what has happened during um, my sleep state. Um, and then keep a diary beside the bed so that when you wake up in the morning you can write a quick note of what your recollections are um, just note as well that it might not happen immediately when you first start doing it it might take a couple of practices but everybody's different um, in my experience sometimes it stuff like this the connection um, is solidified on the first attempt other people it can take a few weeks of practice so when it comes to invocations, this one here is a pretty generalist one and it's potentially a good one to start with. When we invoke, we don't use a insipid, um, pithy tone. We state it with confidence that we know that as we ask, we will receive because you consciously know and hopefully you will consciously believe that as you ask, so you will receive. Now, the other thing too is, of course, I've said before, when we're invoking, we invoke the Creator first, and then we invoke the angels. Now, I choose to empower invocation to the power of three, and I also choose to put in the clause of under grace and in the divine way. Um, and of course, you always follow an invocation with gratitude. So I'll give you a bit of an example of how I would do it. Palms upright, symbolic gesture of receptivity. I'm open to receive the energy of the universe. And I would then start, now I will start with Father Creator because everybody has got a different way of um, referring to the Creator. So some people call it the God or the Goddess or whatever. So you would put in place what feels right and comfortable for you. Okay, so I, this is just a little demonstration. Father Creator, Father Creator, Father Creator. Mother Creator, Mother Creator, Mother Creator. I now invoke the mighty archangel to pour his ray of light into my aura and fill my entire being with wisdom illumination knowledge and understanding to raise my light levels and inspire me to reach my potential to enable me to learn and teach at the highest levels i invoke that the symbols of wisdom accumulated through lifetimes be activated thanks be now you could also finish it off with you know i give thanks because i know that as i ask so i receive these are just different ways of doing it. So an invocation is something that you work and word to your comfort levels. But the intention is there within you. Gratitude isn't just um, a nice idea to adopt in our lives. It certainly is that too. But gratitude is essential to the manifestation process and sincere gratitude um, becomes part of it. And you know the angels and creator know that it can take a little while to actually really feel the sincerity of this especially if people are skeptical you know when they start doing these kind of activities it's like oh well okay i'll say thank you in advance but i don't believe for a moment it's going to come true well after they see a couple of miracles then it becomes a case of like, oh yeah i'm grateful you know and it becomes easier and easier to demonstrate gratitude but yes gratitude is very much part of raising the vibration of love energy as part of the manifestation process and it kind of acts as a magnet to draw the positive vibes of light and love toward you so just something worth considering so of course with all of the angels and the divine love energy there becomes this spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood and this desire you know as the cup fills up and we develop our confidence and that kind of stuff we feel um, more 
capable of providing services to other people and wanting to help them. So all of the angels are associated with uh, service work. Now, I do um, encourage people, in fact, I think it would be very unwise to try and deliver healing energy to people that you haven't obtained consent from. Um, sometimes you can't get consent from them. So, of course, you want to ensure that you put that under grace and in the divine way, little clause in there so that you're not interfering with their divine plan because, of course, that may incur negative karma. So on this slide, we've got a couple of examples of how you can actually do service work um, to help other people along their life path. So other things you can do with Archangel Jophiel is what we call anchoring of the golden ray, which is, of course, the ray that he is the holder of. And you can do this simply by visualising yourself as in this image here. Uh, sounds a bit silly or looks a bit silly in some ways, I guess. But you put on, you visualise yourself standing in white with cords running from your feet to the core of the earth. And, you know, you've got your little silver cap on. It doesn't actually look anything like this, but, you know, artificial intelligence with artwork can be a bit challenging at times but a silver thread that runs from your crown to the infinite heavens above so you're kind of the bobbin on the thread if you like standing on the face of the planet but you then visualize yourself standing in a um, pillar of this beautiful golden yellow light and you invoke the angels you know obviously i say again I invoke creator first and the angels to anchor the golden ray into your um, entire being and then you stand in that and you allow it to pour through you you don't have to do it for a long time it might be five minutes it might be 10 minutes and then you just focus on what we call the sacred breath you just do these deep breathing exercises breathing this beautiful light into you and exhaling it back into the pillar that surrounds you now the blessings of this ray is actually intelligence and knowledge and the more you work with this ray um, the more knowledge you will receive and um, the more um, intelligence if you like um, a greater understanding of universal processes i guess is a better way to describe it so that's an activity you might want to do so I'm trying to keep this video as brief as I possibly can because when we're talking about the greater archangels, they have so much power and so much substance that's actually related to their um, auras and what they can do. And um, yes, yeah, so it could actually be quite long. I can't do justice to it really here in these short videos, but I'll do my best. Um, anyway, so as we mentioned before, one of his powers is actually manifestation and creativity, and he oversees the function of teams of angels to bring these manifestations into earthly form. Now, just to really put this into perspective, or just quickly, without me going over it, um, it really is a matter of creating this vortex with emotional depth to it to be able to shift the vision into the right place at the right time. Um, so without going on and on about it, this video hopefully shows that or implies that, you know, it's more than one person that's working towards this. And teamwork is actually everything for the angels because they're not, they don't have ego like what humans do. They're not egotistical. It's not a competition to see who's going to be the bestest, you know. They work together as a team and they work to create love. So when you're attempting to manifest, Jophiel will encourage you to ask yourself a few questions, you know. First of all, is it the divine idea and to plan it out, you know? So is it a constructive idea? Is it worth your time? Is it going to strengthen your connection to, to the divine? Is it something that involves manipulating people or uh, are you attempting to manifest something that's going to be harmful to other people? because if you're attempting to do that the bottom line is the angels are bound by spiritual law they're not going to assist you to manifest something that's going to be manipulative or harmful now the other thing too is if your manifestations are reliant on the actions of others or involves them um, they might be because you can manifest for anything if you're attempting to manifest um, the resolution of say a neighborhood dis dispute that's bringing you distress you could call upon the divine to resolve these differences in a divine way under grace with the best outcomes for all parties involved now when we do that kind of thing potentially the person will relocate 
or you will find a more suitable place to live, you know? So it's a case of detaching from the outcomes and allowing the divine idea to unfold. Um, so I recognize that some of the ideas that I'm giving about manifestation appear to be a bit shallow, but you know, they're not necessarily so. If you need, for example, if you need to travel to and from work and to be able to sustain yourself on your earthly life, then manifesting a car may be an essential item for you, you know. So the thing is you would want to have a roadworthy car. But the other thing too is if you're going to try and manifest this, just be aware that you do have to be specific sometimes. So it's finding that balance, you know, putting out there to the universe, you need a roadworthy car. Um, because if you just say, I need a car, and you don't say why, you might end up inheriting um, an old bucket that's got no wheels on it or something, or that you've got to invest a heap of money into to get it functioning into a roadworthy status. Because they definitely will de um, deliver on what you're asking for. You know, other um, ideas of a divine idea that will strengthen your connection uh, basically could be putting out to the universe to meet somebody who can actually teach you additional skills um, and to help you to reach your true potential um, and I use these words like raise your um, light vibration to the maximum you can carry because these are all really good aspirations to have now in my experience as well I've put it out to the universe a number of times that I meet people along my journey that can actually help me to grow and to develop my um, excuse me coughing getting a bit croaky to develop my skill base and my understanding of universal workings and I can tell you my goodness me they've never failed it has never ever failed me I've met some incredible people that have shared their knowledge with me which is yeah very grateful for that I can assure you so once you've decided upon the idea that you're going to attempt manifest, and I say attempt, and that's actually the wrong word to start with. We don't say attempt because that actually demonstrates a lack of faith in the fact that you will receive it. So if it's the divine idea, then you're implementing this in the knowledge that it is a divine manifestation. So we make sure that the words that we use within our divine decree, decree are supportive of the fact that we have every intention of getting this because we know that in our heart that it's the right thing to attempt to manifest once again i've brought that word in attempt if it's not aligned with the divine vision it's not going to happen just be really clear with this okay so you would avoid words like you know i want can you help me will you you know what i mean it sounds a bit wussy you use a clear word such as i choose um, you might say, I choose to manifest X, Y, and Z in the divine way, aligned with divine idea, aligned with divine will. These are examples. Um, what else could I put? Just the reminder to be really careful when you're trying to manifest. The reason why you be um, specific, and there's a fine line between being um not specific enough and too specific okay so let's say you were trying to manifest uh, a car to get you to and from work but currently your financial status is not one that can afford to run a sports car let alone service it you know that might be your dream car but this will be um it might be a need to do these in steps so you might need right now just a practical serviceable car that's reliable, um, low maintenance, low running costs and all the rest of it. So that is what you would put on your manifestation. And of course, it's going to be in the divine idea to support you to be able to support yourself financially. That's empowerment. OK, but if you just put out to the universe, I want a car or I choose to have a car um, without putting any clarity around the parameters of what kind of car that you're looking for. I personally would think it's highly unlikely you'll manifest yourself a sports car, but it probably would be more li likely that um, you would manifest a car that potentially um, needs to have some work and some money put into it before it's actually roadworthy. Um, you know, it might be a case of the universe saying, oh, friend's got this old bomb and it needs a new motor, X, Y and Z. Um, that kind of thing can happen as well. So, yes, using the car as an example, you would say... Um, something like I choose to manifest a blue car in the divine way under grace in alignment with divine will that is in good working condition affordable has low running costs five years old um, or thereabouts um, 
with central locking and alarm, whatever it is that you're thinking in your mind that's not unreasonable. Um, and you could also put on there, or better, okay? That's one thing, or better. If the divine has got a better idea for you, let them bring that to you. Um, the people that are into the secret, um, they do that vision board stuff. Now, the relevance of that, the reason why this is actually good is because when you're manifesting, once you've stated your plan and you've written it down, you keep that record, you do the little bit of the ceremony with it, you declare the intention, and of course, a ritual with Amarashaya never goes astray. But where I'm going with the secret is they have the vision board. Now, the vision board is beneficial because it helps to keep the divine idea fresh in your mind without you being so focused on it 24 7 that um, you end up blocking it because the idea of manifestation is actually to put it out into the universe and allow it to come through and at the same time to keep it manifest and vibrant sorry i just got a message come through we'll ignore that because i don't want to have to repeat recording this um the idea anyway is that when we put it out to the universe we keep the vibration of the manifestation alive by visualizing it but if we lock our vision onto it and we don't see anything else then we might miss the opportunities that's the first thing but also if we're so focused on it we then create an energy around us of lack so remember energy is everything so this is why you end up doing the business of gratitude as well because that carries the energy of having received or the knowledge that it is coming through so the vision board going back to it the vision board helps you to retain and energize the vision without actually blocking it so you know it's that case of when to hold on and when to let go you're doing both at the same time when manifesting, of course, it's always really good to have a ceremony. And uh, of course, I've done the video on the Blessing Angel Amara Shire, um, which you can obviously go and check that one out. But basically what you would do when you're doing your ceremony is it's like the divine degree, decree. You state your plan, you use as much clear and precise detail as possible. You write it down, you keep that as a record and you declare your intention. Now, by bringing in the blessings, blessings angel, you're adding a little bit of magic to it. When I'm attempting to manifest, I actually like to um, use my altar and light a candle and these kind of things and um, include the elements, shall we say, you know, a bit of water, a bit of um, earth elements, perhaps a crystal, flowers, a bit of incense bit of essential oils anything like that um, is actually good of um, putting the emotion and the intention to build and strengthen the idea of manifestation now the next part of the visualization pro or the manifestation process is actually visualization um, and it's whatever you're trying to uh, manifest envision it floating toward you and you being open to receive and I put up these images because once again, a uh, little limited with the choices and options here for images um, based on what's available, but it is to give you that basic understanding. You know, the, um, there needs to be emotion attached to the vision. When we see it coming towards us, this, I'm trying to think of how to actually describe this. Okay, a lot of people, when they're attempting to visualize a manifestation, they see themselves in their mind's eye running out and chasing after all these things that they're trying to achieve. But that's them chasing and that suggests lack. Okay, so from an energetic level, we visualize it coming towards us. Um, what else can I say about this? There is a fine line, just so you know, of being focused and visualizing and too focused and visualizing if all you ever think about all day long is this particular um, idea that you're trying to manifest then in a way that becomes a block for receiving so there has to be a matter of visualizing it and then letting it go and handing it over to the universe now part of the way that you might do that is actually through using the vision board this is probably why they're so popular actually because when you look at your vision board you're reinforcing it to yourself but you're also letting it go in between time so that's just an idea so when it comes to manifesting just be aware that um, the angels are going to take pleasure in your achievements and your capacity to um, bring to earth the heavenly image if you like 
And so, yeah, they're going to be around. You don't think that they won't be when you're doing that big party and celebrating because, yay, it worked, you know. And, I mean, an example of this could simply be that, you know, if you were studying towards a degree and you invoke their energy to assist you through the process of study and learning to achieve your goals and all of this kind of thing, you know, I'm pretty sure that they'll be with you on your graduation night. So, my friends, with that, I think I'd like to say thank you for being part of my journey because I really think that's about all I can give you today without the videos getting too long. Um, just a reminder, you have to be comfortable with whatever it is that you're saying. And sometimes when we're doing something new, there is a little bit of discomfort, let's be real. When we're doing something new, if this is all new practice to you, there may be times when you're self-conscious or uncomfortable about it, but just know this is something to push through, push, um, push through this discomfort and allow yourself to become comfortable. The more you do it, the easier it's going to be, the more natural it will feel. And as you go through these activities, you're going to start to feel more empowered. That is for sure. You're going to feel more peaceful, more love. And in the process, you're going to be able to exhibit more love to more people. And this is just um, something that's wonderful for you. It enhances the quality of your life and it enhances the quality of life for everybody around you. So for now, as I said, I'm going to say thank you, bless you, love you, leave you. Have a glorious day, a wonderful week. And Best of luck. I don't need to wish you luck. It's going to happen. All right. Take care. Bye-bye for now.